Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today, as you can tell, we are going to be comparing Devontae Adams and DeAndre Hopkins for fantasy football and deciding who should be taken first, where should they be taken, all that kind of stuff. We're going to do this for best ball, for regular redraft, and for dynasty. So no matter what scoring settings and what league format you are in, I'm going to help you decide which one to take, where to take them, and how much they're worth. So to start, for just regular redraft, regular fantasy football, per fantasydata.com, which I will leave a link to in the description below, Devontae Adams' PPR for regular redraft, regular fantasy football is the 11.4 spot. So that basically means that he's going as the 11th and 12th overall pick pretty much the majority of the times, and he's kind of split in between there. DeAndre Hopkins' PPR ADP for regular redraft fantasy football is the 11.7. So he's very, very similar in Devontae Adams for their ADP. It's usually Devontae Adams going ahead of Hopkins. I shouldn't even say usually. It's almost a 50-50 split. But he's going ahead of him more often than Hopkins is going ahead of him. But it is so split, and there are many times where Hopkins is going above him. So it really is a split. It's almost a 50-50 split. And if we look at Dynasty, so per fantasydata.com, once again, DeAndre Hopkins' Dynasty PPR ADP is the 5.9 spot. So he's usually going at around the 6 overall place. Devontae Adams is the 8.8. So he's usually going at the ninth overall pick. So they're close again, but in Dynasty, Hopkins is going just a little earlier than Devontae Adams. So we're going to get into both of these scoring settings and best ball, and I'm going to let you know what you should think about both of these players. So with that being said, let's get right into the analysis. So to start off, we'll start with Devontae Adams here. Last year, the Packers were tied for 7th in rushing touchdowns. Teams ahead of them and tied with them were the 49ers, the Titans, the Ravens, the Rams, the Panthers, the Vikings, Cowboys, and Cardinals. Now, there's a similarity between all of those teams. They all had a better rushing game than a passing game. Even the Cardinals, who Kyler Murray is definitely seen as a better player and a better prospect than Kenyon Drake, he still wasn't as good and as efficient as Kenyon Drake was last season. All of these teams had more efficient running games than passing games, except the Packers didn't. Yes, Aaron Jones was pretty efficient, but Aaron Rodgers had an incredible season. Aaron Jones was more efficient in the red zone than everywhere else, but Aaron Rodgers was very efficient pretty much everywhere. You could say that Aaron Jones was more efficient than Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers was in a lot more plays, and this team was still a very pass-friendly team. They still enjoyed passing the ball, so teams couldn't just stack the box on Aaron Jones or anything. So, like I said, all of the teams above them had much stronger, or at least semi-stronger running games than passing games, but not the Packers. Aaron Rodgers is definitely the head of that team. Keep in mind that this includes teams with very good rushing quarterbacks, like Lamar, Dak Prescott, and Kyler Murray. So all of those teams who I said were above the Packers in rushing touchdowns, their numbers were a little inflated because of their quarterbacks running for touchdowns. Rodgers had just one rushing touchdown, so Aaron Rodgers wasn't a part of the Packers' running game in the red zone. If we just want to look at running back touchdowns, right, standard rushing touchdowns through the running backs, Aaron Jones led the league in rushing touchdowns. So the Packers were very, very run heavy. I won't say super run heavy because they still enjoy passing, but Aaron Jones in particular had a lot of carries inside the red zone and he absolutely took advantage of them. He was incredibly efficient. If we look between 2016 to 2018, Devontae Adams had double-digit touchdowns every single season. Yet, last year, he had just five touchdowns. And yes, you could say that Devontae Adams missed four games last season, so that is why he only had five touchdowns. But the thing is, he still played 12 games. 
and normally he would have had more than five touchdowns in those 12 games. If we look between 2016 to 2018, he averaged .777 touchdowns per game, which on a 16-game pace is 12.4 touchdowns. Yet last season, in 2019, he averaged just .417 touchdowns per game, which on a 16-game pace is 6.67 touchdowns. So he essentially had half of the amount of touchdowns that he normally would have. Now, if he was 33 years old, then you could say, okay, well, he's just getting older. Or if Aaron Rodgers was just not good anymore, you could say, okay, that makes sense. But that's not the case. This Packers offense is still good. So he got extremely unlucky in the touchdown category last season, and he should have some positive touchdown regression going into this season. You also might think that the reason for Devontae Adams having only five touchdowns is because now they're running it a lot more in the red zone than they used to. Now, that is true. That, that's not false at all. They are running it a lot more than they used to in the red zone. But the thing is, Devontae Adams averaged 1.54 red zone targets per game in 2018. In 2017, that number was 1.57. And in 2016, that number was 1.25. How many do you think it was in 2019? You're probably thinking one, maybe 0.75, something like that. Incorrect. It's 1.5 per game. His number was pretty much on par with his previous seasons. He was getting the same amount of red zone targets per game that he used to. His efficiency was what went down, not his total targets. And if anything, it should have been the total targets that went down because they were running the ball more. But that wasn't the case. And the reason for that is because now that they're running it a little more, teams have to pay attention to the running game in the red zone. Previously, they didn't have to, which meant that they could oftentimes double cover Devontae Adams. And when they were passing it, therefore, they might not always be passing it to Devontae Adams in the red zone. But now, they don't have enough spots to just add more secondary into their lineup. They can't just take out a linebacker and replace them for a cornerback or a safety because this team still likes to run the ball in the red zone. So Devontae Adams was oftentimes going up against single coverage when he was in the red zone. So when this team liked to pass it, they like they had passed it to, to Devontae Adams a lot more than they used to on a per attempt average, especially in comparison to Aaron Rodgers historically with other red zone targets that he really enjoyed throwing to. His efficiency should really be higher than it used to be because he's facing easier coverage. Yet, his efficiency was a lot worse. Devontae Adams isn't becoming a worse player. He's literally in his prime right now. He's 27 and a half right now. Last season, he was 26. So, he's in his prime right now. He just had bad efficiency, which was just bad luck. Straight up bad luck and his efficiency should go back to normal this upcoming season. Between 2016 to 2018, he converted roughly 40% of his red zone targets into touchdowns. So he was very efficient. That's a very, very good number. But last season, he converted less than 17% of them into touchdowns. That's just showing you it was his efficiency that was taking his touchdown total down, and I can guarantee you his efficiency will go back to his normal 40% conversion rate of red zone targets into touchdowns. There's no doubt in my mind that his red zone efficiency will go back to what it used to be. Last season, the Packers had statistically an average offense. They ranked 15th in points per game. But when you looked at this team, they did not show signs of being an average offense. They looked very, very elite. And the reason for that was because they were playing a slower game and they had a good defense statistically they were ninth in opponents' points per game. But I guarantee you, they were not the ninth best defense. If they were playing teams that actually scored a good amount of points, their defense would not be the ninth best scoring defense. If we look at the teams who they played last season, they played the Bears, the Broncos, the Raiders, the Chargers, the Panthers, the Giants, the Redskins, the Bears again, the Vikings without Dalvin Cook, and the Lions without Stafford. Half of their schedule was just a cakewalk, and it was actually over half of their schedule. It was like two-thirds of their schedule. Their defense had it so easy. 
their defense wasn't actually that great. They just got to play such easy teams, and because of that, the Packers on offense could waste clock, and they didn't have to run as many plays as they normally did, which is why their offense, statistically, was just as good last season as it was in 2018. But if you watch that offense in 2018, you know that it was nothing in comparison to the Packers' offense last season. They weren't scoring as much as they could have, and they just weren't running as many plays as they could have. Considering that this season, the Packers are going to play the Vikings, who should have Dalvin Cook, but if he holds out, then they're going to be prepared to use Alexander Madison, so it won't be that big of a deal. They also play the Lions, who should have Stafford. They play the Saints, very good offense. They play the Falcons, who I think should have a very, very good offense, with players like Todd Gurley, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, all those great guys. They play the Bucks. they play the Texans, they play the Vikings again, they play the 49ers, they play the Eagles, the Lions, the Panthers, who might have a solid offense this year with Teddy Bridgewater, and finally, the Titans. These are all good offenses, and not a lot of them actually have great defenses. So they should be in a lot of shootouts this year. Their defense isn't going to be the ninth best scoring defense. They're an average defense at best, and this season, their scoring defense will probably be worse than average because of the tough teams that they're going against, especially tough teams when it comes to their offense. All of these teams are very good offensively. The Packers are going to be in more shootouts. They're going to be passing the ball more. They're not going to be milking the clock. Devontae Adams should be getting more touchdowns, even without the schedule. Like, his efficiency, no matter what, will go up. But now he should probably also be getting even more targets in the red zone, which is a very, very good thing, obviously. Now, once again, Devontae Adams, from 2016 through 2018, averaged .77 touchdowns per game. If we give him those numbers and replace his last year touchdown number with that, he would have just over nine touchdowns. So we're taking .77 touchdowns per game for his 12 games that he played last season. And if that were to happen, he would have had just over nine touchdowns last season. Now, obviously he can't have a decimal, but I'm just saying that if through calculations, that's what he would have had. So he would have had either nine or 10 touchdowns but statistically, it would have been a fraction over nine touchdowns. Now, if we keep all of his other numbers, receptions and yards, and only change those touchdown numbers, not to anything crazy, just to fit what he used to average because he's still in his prime, so this is very reasonable. If we just give him his average of touchdowns per game, he would have had nearly 20 PPR points per game. That would have been the second best amongst all wide receivers last season. We're keeping the receptions the same. We're keeping the yards the same. We're only changing the touchdowns per game because his targets in the red zone was pretty much the same. His efficiency in the red zone was down just due to bad luck. So if we account for that and just give him a reasonable touchdown number, given historically how great he has been in the red zone, he would have been second amongst all wide receivers in points per game. Last but not least, I would like to add that per Pro Football Focus, which I will leave a link to in the description below, he and all of the other Packers wide receivers, this is just ranking the Packers wide receiver core as a whole, they have the fifth easiest strength of schedule amongst all NFL wide receiver cores. So Devontae Adams is going up against some pretty easy defenses and defenses that give up a lot of points. Now, there are a few things that I would like to add about Devontae Adams because there's no perfect player. So, Devontae Adams has not played a full 16 games since 2016. If we go to the bottom here, we can see that in 2017, he had two concussions. In 2018, he had a shoulder sprain and a knee sprain. And last season, he had a toe sprain. So, none of these are major injuries that are going to hinder his production for years to come. They're just injuries that show that maybe his bones are a little weaker, maybe he plays a little more physical than he should, and he's bound to get roughed up a little bit and miss a game or two in the majority of the seasons that he's going to play for the rest of his career, probably. Also, the Packers drafted A.J. Dillon. At 247 pounds, he is a goal line monster. Now, they already used 
Aaron Jones a lot for sure. So there's not much more room to be using another running back in the red zone. I feel like if anything, A.J. Dillon would just be taking some red zone carries away from Aaron Jones. But there is a chance that the presence of A.J. Dillon does limit the amount of passing attempts that Aaron Rodgers has in the red zone, which in turn would limit the amount of touchdowns that Devontae Adams could have. So that was Devontae Adams. Now let's take a look at our next player, DeAndre Hopkins. Okay, so to start out with DeAndre Hopkins, this is just my opinion, but I do believe that he is a more talented wide receiver than Devontae Adams. In fact, I believe that there is a very good chance that he is the single most talented wide receiver in the NFL. I'm not sure between him and Michael Thomas. I want to see another year of Michael Thomas and really study his film and see truly who is the more talented of the two. But I definitely think that DeAndre Hopkins, at the very least, is top two in terms of talent. I also believe that the Cardinals should throw more than the Texans did last season. The Cardinals didn't throw it a ton last season, but they were pretty good when throwing the ball. Kyler Murray is very good, and I think this team overall should be throwing it more than the Texans did last season. The Texans weren't throwing the ball constantly last season. I also believe that this wide receiver core in Arizona is basically the perfect blend between competition, but not too much competition. Guys like Kenyon Drake, Christian Kirk, Larry Fitzgerald, they're all talented and capable of going off any game. So defenses aren't going to solely focus on Hopkins, but they're not so talented that Hopkins is still undoubtedly the best receiver, or you can add in the running backs too, like Kenyon Drake. I believe that DeAndre Hopkins is just the best player on this football team. And I don't think that anyone else is going to be getting more targets on that team. Hopkins is definitely the most talented player here. Also, DeAndre Hopkins has played a full 16 game season in five of his seven career seasons. He's played 110 out of 112 possible games played. So even those two seasons that he didn't play 16 games, he played 15 in each of them. So Yes, we still have to be concerned about him possibly getting injured because that happens with any NFL player. Any player can go down at any time, but DeAndre Hopkins is as stable as they come. No one else has much of a lesser chance than getting injured than DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins was fourth in points per game in 2017. PPR fantasy points per game, that is. Devontae Adams was sixth. So Hopkins was a little better than Devontae Adams. He was only better by 0.3 PPR points per game, but every fraction of a point matters, right? There has been times where, there's been many times actually, where I've lost by 0.1 points. And I'm sure most of you have experienced the same exact thing. It really sucks. And those few extra fractions of a point could win you the game at any time. Also, the Cardinals do not have Aaron Jones on their roster. So the reason I say that is because he is arguably the best red zone running back in the entire NFL. He has been the most efficient running back in the red zone over the last few years. Look at his numbers. It's phenomenal. He converts so many red zone and 10 zone carries into touchdowns amongst running backs who actually get a decent amount of carries inside the red zone. He is converting a higher percentage into touchdowns than literally any of them. It is crazy. Yes, Kenyon Drake is good, or at least looked good last year, but I do believe that he's overrated. We haven't seen him do a lot until just last season, and for just a few games last season. I'm not completely sold on him, but we all know that Aaron Jones is extremely talented. That's something that we can agree on. Kenyon Drake for all we know, could just bust. I mean, David Johnson is probably more talented, or at least was more talented, yet what did he do here, right? I mean, he started out good, but then he just did absolutely nothing. So I'm not super hyped about Kenyon Drake. Also, DeAndre Hopkins is playing with a young, bright star in Kyler Murray. Now, obviously, he used to play with Deshaun Watson, but he still is playing with one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and there's no doubt about that. Now, there are a lot of concerns that I do have about DeAndre Hopkins, though. 
First of all, he's playing with a new team and with a new quarterback. Not only is Kyler Murray probably worse than Deshaun Watson, but it's a new quarterback who he does not have chemistry with. He had chemistry with Deshaun Watson. Devontae Adams has a lot of chemistry with Aaron Rodgers. We can't say the same thing about Hopkins with Kyler Murray this season. Also, DeAndre Hopkins used to rely on a massive target share of typically around 30 to 31%. He likely is not going to see that this season or any season that he's playing with the Cardinals. The Cardinals love to spread the ball out. Last season, they ran the single most four wide receiver sets in the NFL. They ran 310 plays out of 10 personnel, which is one running back, zero tight ends, and four wide receivers. The next closest was Seattle with 90. So the Cardinals were running three and a half times more plays out of 10 personnel than second place was. It's tremendous how many plays they ran out of that formation, which is not that popular, right? The Seahawks only ran about 8% of their plays out of 10 personnel. So they ran the second most plays out of that personnel, yet only 8% of their plays were actually out of that formation. So 10 personnel is not that popular amongst NFL teams, except for the Cardinals. The Cardinals love to run out of that formation. We can also see down here on this wonderful website, playerprofiler.com, which I will leave a link to in the description below if you'd like to check it out. We can see here that he was 46th in fantasy points per target. The thing is that he was saved through being ranked second in target share, 30.9%. He got nearly 31% of Deshaun Watson's targets. That ranked second in the NFL. This is not going to happen again in Arizona. Arizona has a spread, air raid offense with a lot of four wide receiver sets. They love to spread the ball out. Hopkins, while still will definitely have over 100 targets, he's not going to be getting 30, 31% of this team's targets. I'd expect it to be around 26 to 27%, and I would not be surprised if it was 25% or lower. Chemistry is also extremely important in football, especially between a quarterback and a wide receiver. Hopkins has no chemistry with Kyler Murray, like I mentioned before. That's very important. Even though DeAndre Hopkins is good and Kyler Murray is good, chemistry is what really makes it an elite quarterback-wide receiver duo, and this team doesn't have any chemistry yet. And it usually takes two or three years to develop elite chemistry. So even in Dynasty, you're probably going to have to wait two or three years for DeAndre Hopkins to truly be getting not only a ton of targets, but also targets where Kyler Murray knows exactly what DeAndre Hopkins is going to do, where Kyler Murray trusts DeAndre Hopkins with everything. It's going to take a few years for that to happen, and that's going to be toward the end of DeAndre Hopkins' prime. Last but not least, I know I said that in this Arizona offense, it's the perfect blend between competition, but not too much of it. But here's the issue. Kenyon Drake, Chase Edmonds, Eno Benjamin, Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, Andy Isabella, Keyshawn Johnson, Hakeem Butler. All of these guys have a lot of upside, and most of these guys were actually drafted by the Cardinals, so the Cardinals want to use all of them. Now, if in theory, all of them were on the field, that would in a way be good because defenses would not ever be even thinking about double covering DeAndre Hopkins. But of course it would still be bad because it means that DeAndre Hopkins' target share is going to be like 12%. But nonetheless, they can't start all those players. There's just not enough spots on the football field at once. But the thing is, between all of those players, one of them could easily break out and really compete with DeAndre Hopkins. At first glance, there's not any true competition. Like I said before, there's no one who I think would really compete right against DeAndre Hopkins for targets, but there is a chance that that happens. And nonetheless, if DeAndre Hopkins just gets the wind knocked out of him, he has a little injury no matter what, the Cardinals have a lot of players to fill in for him. They're not concerned about not having a good player to replace DeAndre Hopkins. They have someone to replace him, and they might want to play it safe 
and just keep Hopkins out for a little bit. And nonetheless, no matter what you think is going to happen, if you think that DeAndre Hopkins is never going to even take a break, okay, that's fine. But just remember that between all those players, they have a lot of players that they can keep subbing in and subbing out, and all of them are very good where it really shows why the Cardinals are running a lot of four wide receiver sets. They have so much talent, and between all of those players, they do like to target a lot of them. Even though DeAndre Hopkins is definitely the best player on this team, the Cardinals aren't afraid to throw it to any of these guys, and that's why they like to incorporate so many different players in this offense. So with all that being said, what do I think about each of these players? In best ball, even though Hopkins is probably a more boomer bust player, I think that it still is worth it when you're drafting this early to still draft someone who has a floor of 15 points per game most weeks and still has the upside of getting two touchdowns any week in Devontae Adams and easily has the potential to score 25 points any given week. Even though DeAndre Hopkins is boomer bust, I think that his overall points this season will be less than Devontae Adams is for sure, or at least in points per game. So Hopkins' boom might only be a few more points than Devontae Adams' average. So yes, Hopkins is more boomer bust, but his boom isn't actually that much better than Devontae Adams' boom, or especially his average. So in best ball, I like Adams more. And in redraft, regular redraft fantasy football, I think that difference is even bigger because boomer bust isn't as important in regular redraft fantasy football than in best ball. Devontae Adams has such a safe floor. It is incredible. In 2018, I know this was two seasons ago, but still, just hear me out. In 2018, in PPR scoring, Devontae Adams' worst game was 16 points per game. That was literally his worst game. And he played 15 games this season. That's almost a 16-game season. His worst game was 16 points. If he had 16 points every single week of the season, he still would have been a wide receiver one that year. That is insane. His weekly floor is tremendously high. It is higher than possibly even Michael Thomas. I wouldn't quite say that, but it is almost there for sure, and I wouldn't be surprised if that actually ends up being true this upcoming season. Devontae Adams still has a very high ceiling, but his floor is so high. It is incredible how safe of a player he is with still a good amount of upside and a good amount of potential, and that's exactly who I want in regular redraft fantasy football. Now, in Dynasty, who do I like more? So, like I said in many videos, in Dynasty, talent is more important, at least usually, than situation. And that's true. But the thing is, even though Hopkins is more talented than Devontae Adams, I believe that Devontae Adams will be on this offense for pretty much the rest of his career or the rest of his prime. And that is what I really want. In Dynasty, I say that skill is more important than situation because situation is temporary, but I don't think that's the case with Devontae Adams. I think he's going to spend his entire prime on this Aaron Rodgers-led offense. And also, Devontae Adams is still incredibly talented. Anywhere he goes, he's going to be good. It's not like DeAndre Hopkins is so much more talented than him. So in Dynasty, I do think that Devontae Adams is going to be more reliable. Also, not to mention, Devontae Adams is younger than DeAndre Hopkins, so there's that too. So all in all, I like Devontae Adams more in Dynasty than in DeAndre Hopkins, even though he's going about three picks after DeAndre Hopkins. In all formats, regular fantasy football redraft, Dynasty, and best ball, I like Devontae Adams more than DeAndre Hopkins, but I would say that it is the biggest difference in regular redraft fantasy football, just because the floor is so safe there. It is the second biggest in Dynasty, because once again, the floor 
is incredibly high and the floor is so important in Dynasty. But DeAndre Hopkins is more talented than Devontae Adams. So that is one thing going for DeAndre Hopkins in Dynasty. But I still do think that I would definitely rather have Devontae Adams than DeAndre Hopkins in Dynasty. And last but not least, best ball is the smallest difference because Hopkins' boom weeks are very, very good. They're better than Devontae Adams' boom weeks, I would say. But still, give me Devontae Adams over DeAndre Hopkins. He's much safer. The only concern are injuries, but he's not someone who's torn his Achilles, torn his ACL. He's not someone who's had a ton of major injuries. He's just had quite a few sprains, and they're not going to hinder his production, but it just means that naturally he plays a little, a little more aggressive than he should, and many years he'll be missing one or two games just due to sprains and a little bit of bad luck. So that wraps up my analysis on both of these players. I want to know what you guys think, or at least what you thought before heading into this video. So in the description below, let me know which player do you prefer in any of these scoring settings, regular fantasy, redraft, dynasty, or best ball. And let me know why, or if you just, for some reason, just like a certain player more and you don't know why, but you just like that player more, then I guess let me know who that player is. I want to know what you guys thought and let me know if I changed your mind about any of these players because I would like to know what my influence is on you guys and I'd love to hear that I'm helping you guys in a positive way, learning new things about these players and possibly changing your mind about something and earning you a fantasy football championship this season or if you're in dynasty leagues in years to come. So that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I have done quite a few videos recently. I'm doing videos every single day, actually. I'll leave a link below in the description to, first of all, what you have to watch, if you haven't already, is the video on Debo Samuel's injury and what the impact of that injury is. You have to watch that video right now if you have not already. So I will leave a link to that video in the description below. Also, I've done mock drafts. Um, if you click on my profile, I made a playlist specifically for mock drafts, so there's all of those. I'll leave a link in the description below to the first mock draft that I did, and from there, you can go to the second mock draft as well. And I also did a three-part series on sophomore wide receivers heading into 2020, like AJ Brown, like Deontay Johnson, all of those guys. It's a three-part series. In the description below, I will give a link to the first part in that series. And from there, you can go to the second and third part. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more content like this, you can go follow me on Twitter. I put out a lot more content over there than here. So definitely go check me out there. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It really, really does help. It seriously helps a lot, especially when you're a smaller YouTuber like me. So guys, that will be it. Thank you for watching this. I appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Peace.